Hello, Melanie. How are you? Hi, really well. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, let's start with a um, few words about yourself. Okay, so I am a business and mindset coach. Um, historically, this was built off of the back of, I spent about five years as a hypnotherapist. So my main area of expertise was anxiety and stress and understanding subconscious thought patterns. Um, after a few years and once my business had grown and um, got quite busy, I started working with more and more female entrepreneurs, kind of mixing the, the mindset side, but also building in business as well and how to grow the business. Um, but after a while, it became apparent that the biggest stumbling blocks people had weren't really knowing what to do. It was something stopping them from doing the things that they knew would work. Yes. So, um, as you mentioned, um, obstacles um, in modern day entrepreneurs, what would you say are the most common obstacles for the small business owners? That yeah, the biggest ones that come up over and over again, to be honest, are things like people not feeling that they're good enough, comparing themselves to other people, worrying about being judged or what other people will think, a fear of failure, um, is obstacles like that really, that on the surface people don't necessarily walk around thinking, oh, I'm not pursuing my business because I have a fear of failure. It will present itself much more in the lines of having thoughts of, oh, I haven't got time to do that. Or yeah, I've got this really good idea, but I'll wait until I'm ready. But really when we delve into what does being ready look like or, you know, going a little bit deeper into that thought, really it's a, I'm worried about what if I make a mistake or what will people think of me or what if I can't do it? Right. So that's the underneath work for us to start healing. And that's then what helps them break through those blocks in business. Yeah, because we usually, we don't realize that we usually recreate our own obstacles. You know, nobody's telling yes. you that you're not good enough or you can't do it. It's, everything is in your head. Yes. So our own mind really is the thing for us to crack. If we can crack that, there is no obstacles as such in the external world because we can always find solutions. Not to say that everything is always easy for people, but as in there's always a way around things, whereas it, our mind is the biggest obstacle. What we tend to have at a kind of, imagine um, at a deep subconscious level, we have our beliefs. These drive everything. And above beliefs, we have our thoughts. Above our thoughts, we have our behaviours. So our behaviour is just how we're spending our time, um, whether we're working on our business or not, or coming up with excuses. Most people just focus on their behaviour, whether they're getting things done or not. Sometimes they'll stop to hear the level of thoughts that we have behind them, which might be, I'm too busy for that, or I'll put that off at the moment, I'll come back to it another time. But that is only when we look into beliefs that are really sitting at the root of things. Beliefs are, um, and subconscious thoughts, we never create any intentionally to hold us back. Everything we've ever learned in life was there to protect us at some point or was helpful. But the part of the brain that stores our beliefs isn't logical and rational. So it can't work out if what it's stored or what it's learned is still appropriate. So things like when we were young or in primary school or something like that if we had an experience where we put our hand up to you know say something in front of the class and we forget what we're saying or we misinterpreted the question and we made a bit of a fool of ourselves and felt silly and went into our fight or flight response the brain's going to store that as this is an experience not to be repeated again so I'm going to create a belief which is basically it's safer for me to hold myself back and let everybody else speak first so that would have been helpful in that situation to avoid us from getting further ridicule in school. Fast forward 30 years or so when someone's trying to set up a business and they want to put a social media post out, but there's a, a feeling in them that's kind of stopping them from doing it. It's not until we peel back into the beliefs of thinking, well, where was that belief once helpful? Rather than kind of a lot of people just beat themselves up for thinking, oh, why have I just not done it again? And everybody else is better than me and they're just cracking on with it. Not thinking, ah, my brain is actually trying to do something helpful to me here or is trying to hold me back from potential stress, danger or you know, ridicule or something like that. And once we've worked out what it is and we've healed that initial thought pattern and changed the belief system, that's when it filters up into our thought patterns which is oh maybe I'll make time to make that post today or maybe I'll I'll make steps towards that new business that then filters into our behavior which means we get on and do the thing right um so 
um, how would you say that we could overcome these obstacles? Because I know it's very difficult and, you know, it takes time and patience. People are not very patient nowadays, but I, I know that there is always a way. But, you know, what's the first step towards overcoming these obstacles? The first step really is looking at your belief system behind it. So if you've got a deep down belief that is, it will never work for me, or I'll never be able to do it, or is only a matter of time until I fail anyway. The first step really is like recognize those thoughts, because as, as for all the time that we've got one of those beliefs, we're only going to get so far before that obstacle comes up. Those beliefs could be either things that we've learned through like those um, examples before and about being being younger, but it could be that it was an absorbed voice of somebody else's. So when we're in our formative years, when we're growing up, we absorb voices from our parents or our caregivers or our teachers. And if one of those was projecting onto us in the sense of if they were saying, you'll never be able to do it, or that isn't good enough, or you got, you know, a four A's, why didn't you get five A's, all of that kind of thing. That then also creates that subconscious belief system. All the time that we've st we've still got that, we're never going to get much further beyond it. So we need to stop really and look at what are the thoughts behind the thoughts? You know, what are our deep rooted beliefs about this, this business? Because we can logically think that we can do it and logically want to make it happen. But if something bigger and greater within us is saying, I don't believe it ever will, that's what's going to come out later. So the first bit is really taking some time to look inwards at what belief system you're, you've got behind the whole thing. And then slowly, once you've worked out what it is, updating it bit by bit. So you may well have come across things like affirmations before. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So one area that a lot of entrepreneurs can fall down and not just entrepreneurs, all sorts of people with affirmations is that they find a deep rooted limiting belief. And they try to just affirm the complete opposite. So, for example, if someone has a belief that they're not good enough, not because they're actually not good enough, but because that's what they learned when they were younger or believing that they aren't good enough is a way of protecting themselves from putting themselves forward and making a mistake, something like that. If they've got a belief that they're not good enough and they just think, right, OK, so I just need to believe that I am good enough. And they spend every day looking in the mirror saying, I'm good enough, I'm good enough, I'm good enough. The brain is actually just going to dismiss that because mm. it's too far removed from the belief that they already have. So if they instead worked out, right, I've got a belief system of I'm not good enough. So what's one slightly better belief system that is still believable, but is better than where I am? So it might be there are some things that I'm OK at. And then people might think, oh, actually, that feels a bit more comfortable than just telling myself I'm good enough, even though deep down I don't believe it. So they start just saying, OK, there are some things I'm OK at. There are some things I'm OK at. And then looking for evidence of what are all the things that they're just OK at. Once they start to have moved up into there, they can work towards there are things that I'm quite good at or there are things that I'm, I'm very good at. Then it could be I'm good enough to try. And it, that could then move into I'm good enough. Do you see what I mean? So it's kind of like moving a belief system up bit by bit rather than just trying to affirm the opposite and push themselves into doing it if their belief system is really anchored in the total opposite. The same as somebody if they are living in, um, you know, a really kind of low financial situations around themselves and they're trying to just affirm I'm abundant and wealthy their brain's going to dismiss it because it's like, well, all the evidence around me is showing that I'm not abundant and wealthy because I've got bills and, you know, whatever situation they're in. Whereas if instead they look for, so what's one better feeling than just thinking I have no money and I have nothing? It might be I have an abundance of sunshine. I have an abundance of clean water or I have an abundance of friends around me. Something where they're tapping into a feeling of things that they have, but it's still believable enough that the brain isn't going to just mm. dismiss it. From there, it might be then looking into the small bits of money that they do have coming in, tapping into appreciation of that, then moving up and moving up. So getting there slowly instead of just trying to believe something that fundamentally they just don't believe. Basically, in a way, the way I see it is to sort of program the programming or repro yes. reprogram the programming yeah because we're talking about generational programming here and yes. we're so influenced by society you know we all have to follow the narrative we all have to do this and this and that well actually when you stop and you think about it there is always a better way but my question to you now is 
how would someone realize that there is a better way if they can't see it for themselves? So a lot of the time it takes awareness or open-mindedness enough to think even if I can't see it I'm open to the possibility that this could be an option for me in which case if some if it's like setting up a business for example even if they can't yet see how they could possibly do it you know they might be trapped in a nine to five job thinking how I need this to be able to pay my bills and if I don't do that like if I take time out of that to set up a business I'm not you know and they might feel trapped in that loop that's okay. In that sense, I would then say, look at the evidence of where you can for anybody else that has done it. So you're just looking to the possibility there could be another way, rather than just instantly dismissing it and saying stuck in the story of I can't possibly change or this is just the way things are. If it's like, well, I can't see how to do it yet, but so and so left this job and they went on to do this and somebody else has done it. There is evidence around me that it is possible to be abundant and wealthy or to go off and set up your own business or to you know break out of whatever other kind of societal thought pattern it is um, and just know that there are other options around the more we start opening our eyes and seeing it and looking for how other people are doing things the more and more solutions come to us right um when someone um comes to you for you know for guidance and they're so stuck in their sort of, I would say, negative pattern. How do you break that negative pattern? I assume it's very difficult. Well, from my point of view, usually it's not because by the time someone's booked in, they're aware of wanting to change. Okay. So yeah. it's more the people that aren't ready for coaching or therapy or any type of help. But then in which case nobody's going to be able to help because as humans until we're ready to change we won't change we will stay stuck believing the same thing because it fits our own narrative we've got to reach that point of thinking ah i want something better for myself here mm. then we're open to change and help and all of that yes basically the first step to change is to realize and admit to yourself that you know there is a problem and uh, you need to, you're the one who needs to work on it. Basically. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. And I'd say the vast majority of humans don't want to do that because mm. it, it's uncomfortable. Mm. And it's quite helpful for it. So for anybody who watches who's more on the kind of empathic side of things, it's knowing we can't be responsible for anybody who's not yet ready to change. Sometimes people can, coming from a place of love and care, want to fix other people and want to say hey life could be so much better and you could feel you could stop doing that and do this instead but in all honesty if somebody's not ready to hear it or not ready to look inwards they're going to have a, a boundary around them that's not open to it yeah we you, you i mean we don't have control other uh, over other people's free will in my opinion yes exactly so if someone doesn't want to be helped they do yeah 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 that's it and we've got to get to that point ourselves of thinking i want to make a, a change with something yeah. um so like you might know from some of my posts one of the changes that i had was about five years ago now i stopped drinking alcohol before that so i used to drink you know what most people would probably say is an average amount for people to have but it it to me it was holding me back from doing things it was taking too much you know weekends were kind of written out uh, ruled off because of it and things so I thought actually it was a change I wanted to make but had someone said to me before I was ready to change why didn't you go and see someone about it or here's a really good book on it I wouldn't have been interested mm. in the slightest because my belief system was that it was fun and it was enjoyable and I didn't mm. want to change it as soon as I got to the point of thinking I actually want to spend my time on other things okay this is a bit of a um, habitual behavior how do I break it then I was open to the information then I changed and then it's, you know, I, I haven't really thought about it since. So we have to be ready for it and open-minded to, yeah. to a change. Open and ready to receive. Yeah. Um, let's talk about law of attraction because I believe in it. It works um, and it can help so many people to achieve the life they want if they know how, if they know what it is and how to practice it. Um, in your opinion, in your experience, um, where would you advise uh, people to start with law of attraction and how to use it in everyday life? 
I would really suggest people find the kind of language that resonates for them. So when some people say universe, <clears throat> some other people mean God, some people mean a higher energy, some people just mean the, the cosmos as it is, some people, people even mean their own, you know, within their own power. So we've kind of got lots of different explanations all explaining the same thing. And some people might dismiss the law of attraction because in those words it sounds like attraction that we're attracting things to us and they might think I can't get my head around that in which case if they could change it into um, the law of creation in the sense of okay so what we focus on is what we then give more energy to and that's what we we find so I think firstly knowing what language you identify and that resonates with you individually is the first thing because if we can believe something then it's going to help us look into it so personally, although, yes, I do use the term the universe, by that I just mean the kind of one energy that we all are a part of. So the energy isn't the universe isn't something separate from us. We are a part of it. So it's a kind of co-creative um, process in the sense of, you know, the, the fundamental laws for um, or parts of law of attraction being ask, believe, receive. Well, a lot of people can then, if you really identify with that terminology that's great but a lot of people think well, what okay ask I'll just say oh I want something um I'll, I'll think that I can have it and then I'll just wait for it to show up in which case that's then where people get stuck with it because the it goes a lot deeper than that in that asking for something isn't just what do we think we want it's what every part of our being is tuned into and is thinking and is dominantly kind of focusing on um believing again thinking back to what we said before about the behavior at the top thoughts and then we've got all our subconscious belief systems we can have a behavior of telling someone oh i want my business to do really well but if we believe that actually that's going to be um or we won't be able to handle it if we get there or something we've got a stronger belief system that's saying i believe i'm not going to have this thing so we're creating off of our belief system not just off of what we want mm -hmm. and then when it comes to receiving Again, that can then sound like we sit around and wait, whereas actually it's more receiving is the, the just the creative, the last manifestation part. That if you've been thinking about something and you've been believing and putting the action and the effort in towards it, receiving it is just the physical evidence that we see as the last part of the process. So when it comes to the language around it, we could have um, law of attraction, ask, believe and receive. If people are more on the scientific side of things, it might be a case of, what you focus on your reticular activating system is going to look out for more of which is going to then help you tune into going for opportunities that line up with what you really want so we can look at it from an inner point of view rather than looking outwards because i think sometimes it can be a bit disempowering when people are like well i've asked the universe for something and i'm waiting mm -hmm. and then it's like but you are the universe so if you know it's coming what, what do you need to do to make it happen so it's kind of tying up I think for just helping people find the language that fits right with them where they can also take personal responsibility in it of thinking okay so am I genuinely believing that like if I believed I was the person that was worthy of this stuff or that this was going to happen for me what would I do now for example if somebody wants like a really big financial month in their business they can be saying oh yeah I want to earn xyz amount if they were genuinely believing that they were going to be earning xyz have they got the space in their diary are they doing the marketing that backs it up have they, have they made the have they got the skills and the services and the products ready for people so it's that whole our belief system has got to really be in tune with it we can't kind of just wish and want something mm -hmm. and then and then not tie up with it yeah I understand. Yes. Um, I would like to add here that also uh, once the law of attraction actually starts working, gratitude is a great way to um, to maintain the law of attraction. Would you agree? Definitely. It is one of the biggest principles in mindset work that we, we kind of start off with. From a neuroscience point of view, the brain can't focus on a positive and a negative at the same time. So naturally, we're more hardwired to want to look for the negatives because that's what was better for survival. Yeah. We wouldn't want to be being chased by wild uh, you know, animals or predators and be stopping to appreciate the pretty sunset at the same time. You know, the brain wants to focus on danger and keeping us um, safe. However, in our modern environment, now that we're not really surrounded by 
those kind of threats and dangers anymore, the brain is still on the lookout for what could be a problem, what could be a worry. If we switch that focus into what are we grateful for, what's gone well, it doesn't mean that everything is rosy all the time, but it's about that, okay, so even within this tough day, I'm grateful for the fact that I have, you know, X, Y, Z, whether it's family members around us or that we could um, hang the washing out on the line because it was dry enough in the sunshine, whatever it is, once we start looking for the things we're grateful for, we're tuning the brain out of looking for the things that could be a problem. This then helps um, really grow our thought patterns to focus more dominantly on the good than the negative. And then by nature, the more we're focusing on the good things, the more we're going to see them. The more we see them, the more opportunity it creates. The more it creates, the more we experience. And I have also noticed that over time, when you start practicing law of attraction and gratitude, your brain automatically goes into that vibration and everything everything is better your life is better you're more abundant you're happier would you agree with that because i think it's just a matter of yeah. habit in a way yeah absolutely because really around us all the time there are millions of things to be grateful for there's also millions of things that we could complain about those things are always there there's a contrast of everything we are like the the receptors that are kind of perceiving all that information around us and attaching a story to it which we then goes on to create our kind of life story so out of everything around us we can look for problems or we can look for solutions we can look for what we don't have or we, we can look for what we do have there will equally be an abundance of of both just the same as you can have people that are extremely wealthy but are miserable or you can have people that are that don't have a lot materialistically but are very very happy it doesn't depend on what we have it depends on what we think about mm. what we have so gratitude is really the the fundamental principle behind switching your focus from what you don't have into what you do and then as you do look for that stuff energetically vibrationally that's what we notice more and more of because our brains are, are wired in the sense that we can't possibly perceive every bit of information around us all at once so it picks out the things that are most relevant to us picks out what's most relevant to us based on what we dominantly think about and what our core beliefs are so if our core beliefs are there's always enough things are always working out for me there's opportunities wherever i look what do we then see out of an, an abundance of good and bad stuff yeah. our brain picks out there's an opportunity that's going well don't worry we can learn from this if our core belief is everything's against me or things always go wrong we will look for evidence of yeah see there's another thing that's gone wrong and that's broken down today that's just my luck so it's not the things it's the story that we attach to it yeah um so gratitude is one of the best ways for people to just to start i usually recommend before bed at night just writing down yeah. three things a night that they've been grateful for if you keep it up for at least kind of three weeks or so you start to really notice that that difference yeah. Um, I had a look on your uh, on your website. You have some really nice products and services to offer to guide others towards better life. Um, could you tell us a bit more about um, your products and services and how they can help people to achieve their business goals and personal goals, of course? Yeah, of course. Thank you. So I work with people on lots of different services, right from like one off hour sessions or half days up until a full year or more together. One of the things that I'm a big believer of as a coach and a therapist is that people are the experts in their own lives. So they know how much help and support they need. So I don't like to have a kind of prescriptive, this is how long you have to work with me for. I like to be there on other people's kind of terms in the sense of I'm here for as long as they need and for as long as they're getting um, great change and, and value from and as soon as they're ready to then move on um, and don't need me that's it then they're ready to go so it's not like a, a thing that anybody's tied mm. into what I find is most popular at the moment I have a, a package where a lot of people do a monthly session which comes with then follow-up notes and a check-in service but that's a pay-as-you-go option so people can say whether it's one or two months or they might stay for a full year it's really up to whatever they need from me all right, excellent. Um, is there anything else you would like to add before we finish? No, I don't think so. No, I think we've um, covered quite a lot of yeah. lovely stuff and mindset there. Yeah, that was a very good conversation. Thank you very much uh, for joining me today and I'll speak to you soon. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Take Bye. care. Bye. Bye.